you. Thank you for the chance to talk a little bit about. Uh, yeah, actually, my my sh short adventure, a short adventure uh, so far with the Eyes Vision library, and uh, how I used it for uh, the deep fashion data set. So this is what I would try to talk about a little bit today. But also, I will uh, like to focus on the training on multiple GPUs because this is uh, well something that I really wanted to to uh, achieve. Uh, with the eyes vision and uh, I think up until now uh, nobody has uh, uh, shared some uh, solution on how to do that uh, in terms of the eyes vision library so yeah I hope that uh, you you will get some some interesting information from my presentation and hopefully you will learn something uh, yeah. so yeah uh -huh. so do you have any questions no, 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 just thanks a lot for this. Yeah, and I think you're correct. Mm -hmm. You're going to be the first one presenting on how to use multiple GPUs so far. Yeah. Okay, so I, I don't want to spoil it because even today morning I was working uh, on last uh, fixes on fast AI. But uh, yeah, let's see along the way how this uh, goes. Uh, just a quick quick question, actually. Well, the, since we are not in a, in, in a room, I cannot... Uh, see you raising your hands, but uh, I was wondering who here uses FastAI and who is using PyTorch Lightning, but guessing from the Discord channel, uh, majority of people use uh, uh, FastAI. So I will uh, start with PyTorch Lightning and uh, hopefully uh, later uh, also talk about uh, running a multiple GPU uh, with FastAI uh, and uh, Ice Vision. So, uh, so the scope of this presentation is the following. Um, so we will try to uh, to, to run uh, multiple uh, GPU training on a uh, uh, two GPUs uh, Tesla uh, from DataCrunch. Uh, so that's the ultimate uh, goal. Uh, and on the way, we will see a couple of uh, tweaks and my uh, findings of, of how to use the Eyes Vision library and how to extend it uh, to your particular uh, case. So, so, yeah, this is uh, the final uh, hopeful image that we will see uh, where we have the G multiple GPUs trading and uh, yeah, being fully loaded. Uh, and also um, like as a final outcome of uh, such multiple GPU training, I can share here my, uh, let's close that. Uh, yeah, my uh, deployment of a train model uh, through Gradio app. So this is actually a web page. Uh, you can uh, go to go to that link and uh, see the same page I'm seeing here. I'm only embedding it in a, a notebook for uh, yeah for easier uh, present presenting. So let's choose uh, an image, sample image, to pass to the model. I click submit. Mm, yeah, and uh, so we see that this works. So the, the objects are detected. Here is the latency. So this is something that uh, works entirely uh, uh, on the cloud deployed through uh, the Gradio, uh, Gradio uh, package. So yeah, let's begin. So the first thing uh, I want to mention is the deep fashion data set. So um, it's a data set available uh, on GitHub and uh, maintained and created by the switchable norms folks. And uh, it's, it has a couple, it can serve a couple of uh, purposes, but uh, mainly it serves the purpose of um, detecting clothing uh, items on uh, images. So as we see, we have here the bounding boxes, the key points, and the uh, masks. So it can also be used for, uh, for, for segmentation. But in my case, I'm using it for the uh, object detection with uh, regular bounding boxes. So there is uh, nearly half a million uh, unique images with 13 categories. And uh, well, to access this data set, you need to go under this link and uh, fill out a form. So it's not exactly entirely uh, openly accessible, but uh, I managed just by simply filling the form and being honest <laughs> that I'm using it for research purposes. They granted me the password automatically, but uh, with the uh, remark that I should not share it myself. So if you're interested, you can easily uh, obtain the data set and uh, run the entire thing uh, for yourself. So also this solution that I'm showing here is uh, accessible on my uh, GitHub. Uh, so you can go to github.com, uh, well, my profile, and, and uh, here under deep fashion, everything that I'm showing today is here in the presentation file. So you can see the entire solution, how it's deployed and uh, 
everything that goes underneath. Uh, so you can check that for reference uh, later. So the uh, first thing, yeah, we need to is uh, to explore the data. Uh, so the data comes with uh, JSON annotations. Uh, so the regular step that we take here is to load the, load the annotation and see what we have inside. And unfortunately, this data set comes with a uh, custom uh, labeling. So, well, as you see, there is a bunch of numbers and uh, some other information in the file. Not very pleasant. Uh, that's the kind of job that nobody wants to do. Of course, we want to get straight to the point. So that was my face yeah, when I saw this uh, custom label. <laughs> very nice. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, it was true. It was true. And, uh, you know, half a million images and, uh, well, debugging it and fixing. But <laughs> luckily, luckily, the guys uh, from, from uh, yeah, the maintainers of the data set uh, actually provide this deep fashion to Coco uh, function, which, well, didn't work initially. But uh, I made some small changes and I uh, managed to get it running. And I actually converted my those labels, those custom labels that they have, into Coco dataset uh, label files, and uh, well, that was that was saving a lot of work. So, uh, for those who are not familiar with uh, Ice Vision, uh, so the idea behind is that uh, we want to convert everything to record uh, objects, and those record objects connect the image and their labels, so the category of the item and uh, the bounding box, so the localization. Of the of the item in that image, and uh, so to to do that, we either use uh, one of the provided parsers or we create our own. So in this case, instead of creating our my my own parser for this particular data set, I use the conversion and use the Coco parser. So Coco is a uh, is a typical data set used for um, testing and uh, and ben benchmarking uh, detection models. Uh, so let's let's uh, proceed with the regular. Uh, stuff from Ice Vision, uh, the regular stuff you can find in uh, many tutorials that are there uh, for the for the library. So yeah, just import everything that we have. Also the the Ice Data module, and here is the, the first new uh, like extension to the regular stuff. So I prepared this helper function for the particular uh, Deep Fashion dataset, uh, which parses uh, my label files and the images and create the records that I mentioned before. So, uh, as you see, there's many like Coco uh, namings because uh, it, it comes from the, the Coco dataset that I was playing uh, with uh, before. So, like with minimal changes to it, I was able to apply it for the deep fashion. So now, uh, yeah, this function is, uh, is defined, uh, we can use it. Another thing uh, that uh, I uh, would like to introduce is the Omega Conf. So, it's a kind of utility function that converts your uh, regular dictionary into a, a, an instance, a class instance. So instead of accessing it like, like a, a regular dictionary with the get item and the string, it converts all those fields into, uh, yeah, into actual fields like you, we have in a, in a class. So that's something I found useful and uh, use it. And so here, yeah, uh, what happens now, uh, we are parsing our data set from the config path. Uh, so that's the path to, uh, to the data set I have in my catalog. Uh, so this data set, here it is. There's a train and validation uh, folder. So that's the data set I downloaded, the deep fashion, the actual images and annotations. I'm not going to enter that folder. I did that today and my entire notebook crashed because there is a half a million images there. So you have to believe me that the images are actually there. Uh, so that's what happens. So it opens that catalog, uh, does uh, its magic, parsing magic, and produces the records and also the class map. So uh, the class map is a thing that connects uh, our categories. So let's say it is uh, trousers, t-shirt, hat, whatever we have, whatever categories we have. So it connects those categories with a uh, integer. And that's necessary for a model because we don't uh, model a string, but rather an, uh, a floating point number or, or integer in this case. So uh, now let's see the records. Uh, how come it's so fast uh, that uh, I have uh, parsed half a million files just uh, in, a, in a second. So the trick here is actually I'm loading cached records. I did that before and uh, saved uh, the, the labels in a, in a cache uh, file that could be easily read uh, with a like maximum performance and uh, that's the reason. So here, as we see, uh, we with the show record function, we can. that's all part of the standard uh, uh, Vision package. So we can see the actual image and we see that the annotations 
and the categories, bounding boxes, everything looks fine. So uh, yeah, we can proceed. So next thing we do is uh, just like in your other uh, tutorials on uh, Ice Vision uh, use is uh, defining the augmentations to increase the uh, variability of our uh, image instances to uh, yeah to help with the generalization of the train model. So uh, well, I won't go through all of those uh, augmentations, but this is pretty standard stuff that we use in uh, object detection. And later, uh, of course, we have to define our data sets and uh, the data loaders. So data loaders just connect uh, the items that we have here with the batch size and the number of workers and, and the augmentation methods. So let's do that. And now we can take a look at the batch. So what actually uh, is presented to the model. Uh, and that's it. So that's the, the our augmented images. Uh, some of them are uh, reshaped, some of them are padded uh, to fit the model input, which in my case is uh, 512 by 512. So up until now, I think everything is pretty standard for those of you who have used the uh, Ice Vision library. It's, uh, it's boring. Actually, we have two uh, code owners here, so you are bored to death, I guess. But I'll try to make it more interesting now with uh, the particular case of uh, efficient debt, because I was working a lot on efficient debt, at, and that was a subject of most of my uh, messages and issues on GitHub, because, uh, yeah, I, I really wanted to get them running. And the reason for that is their performance, their performance per uh, floating point of operations. So here on this graph, uh, we can see them compared uh, with uh, other uh, state-of-the-art. Well, that's a little bit outdated right now because YOLO actually has two more uh, versions uh, released since. But uh, yeah, well, just looking at this particular graph of coming from the official paper uh, yeah, announcing the release of efficient debt, we can see that with using less uh, floating, point, floating point operations, we can achieve better scores on the COCO uh, data set. So yeah, like uh, encouraged by this graph, I decided to test it. And uh, that's how I found the Ice Vision uh, library in the first place, because they already have it implemented. Uh, you can use it out of the box and it works. Uh, however, if you want to extend it, there is there is still uh, uh, a lot a lot of uh, things to do. So, if anyone wants to uh, help developing, I guess there is uh, like always room for more people on, on the Discord channel. And like, I really like the community, and uh, well, that's that's how I ended up here today. So, I also encourage you to to join and uh, to test it for yourself. And so, the efficient that comes with a variety of of backbones and. Uh, so the, the ones, I just listed a couple of them here. There is uh, quite some more, but you can see that they have a different number of parameters and uh, different uh, scores on the test COCO uh, metric. So uh, for this presentation, I'm going to stick with the D1 model, but it can easily be changed by just changing one, uh, one string uh, here to, uh, to another model and like the entire, entire stuff works. Uh, so thanks to the Ice Vision portability, and so you can test it uh, for yourself. Uh, I highly encourage you to do that. So yeah, like following the tutorial, what we would do, we would like just, just uh, quickly check again, what is our config file? And we would uh, define a model, uh, yeah, define the metric. So in this case, it's the same metric that we were observing here, the COCO metric for the bounding boxes. Uh, the model is just an efficient debt model. Uh, and now we create the learner for those who, who are familiar with fast AI. This is a typical stuff. And then we just uh, freeze it and try to find our learning rate. And we should be happy because I think this should work. Oh, well, first, uh -huh, yeah. out of memory. Well, out, out of memory is not so bad. <laughs> Presenting usually... live is always like this. <laughs> you can usually fix this. Uh... Uh -huh. Something is running here. Uh, I guess it's the the, the fast AI is working in the background, but I kind of expected that. When it crashes, it doesn't clean up after after uh, self. So so you have to do it uh, your own on your own. And uh, yeah, let me just do this. Uh, it's fast AI train. Now yeah, now we have the memory back. So I think we will have to restart the notebook, actually. Sorry for this little inconvenience. Not a problem at all. This is live, live coding. 
curse. Yeah, that's you know that this is this is what happens. Like this is our bread and butter. Yeah. So I'm not cheating. At least you know that I'm not cheating. This, <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is life. <laughs> uh huh. All this, all that. Mm hmm. Now try again. Okay. Okay. Seems like we do have the memory. Okay. Yeah, it's running. So what, what this does? It's just uh, trying to find our optimal learning rate uh, for for a particular model and for the particular optimizer. And so this plot here shows uh, the result of the learning rate finder. And uh, so usually what this suggested is the point of the highest slope. And uh, here the value is, is actually suggested by the object itself. But yeah, let's say it's uh, one to the e to the minus two, somewhere around here. So that's actually the, the learning rate I chose. So now we can uh, start training. And as you see, well, everything works. Everything seems fine. So what am I doing here, right? Uh, well, it seems fine. <laughs> uh, we would, we could unfortunately not wait for so, mon so much time, but uh, you will have to believe me that what happens after some time is this. So uh, this is actually a training I run two days ago, I think, just to show what I meant and why I'm doing all this, uh, while I'm through all this trouble. So unfortunately, the, the training of efficient dead models can go out of, out of scope, can go uh, can reach none, and uh, well, this I was surprised by this. I didn't know how to solve that problem, and uh, I was looking around on the forum here, and uh, also on the official efficient that uh, implementation, and uh, well, I just stopped this train now. But uh, so it what happened? What I found is that unfortunately, well, that's what happens. Yeah, so we have we get nuns in loss. Uh, this is uh, Ross Whiteman, the uh, author of Port, Porting, uh, of the Efficient Models from uh, TensorFlow to PyTorch. He is a, if you are not familiar with his GitHub, I uh, highly recommend checking it out. He is uh, on a mission to implement all the results from papers uh, uh, like, that are released uh, about object detection and not only uh, computer vision, etc. He is, he is on a mission to implement and reproduce all the results. So he has like a ton of models and uh, other uh, useful tools in, on his GitHub that you can you can check and, and try. So also there is an issue. So somebody called Michael Monashev also posted that uh, problem here. And unfortunately, the answer from our the original uh, author of, of this uh, PyTorch port uh, said that you should not modify the optimizer and it's best if you use uh, his uh, workflow for training the models because they are uh, very uns like specifically non-stable uh, so uh, even the official implementation has plenty of questions about non-issues so has and he sums it up with that the info that it's best to stick with the range of recommended optimizers so yeah and the recommended optimizers is is the tim library so this is something that he developed and uses uh, well, so without it, it seems like we cannot uh, go move on. And, and believe me, I, it's not just a problem with uh, like a custom optimizer from FastAI because here I have not changed anything. And uh, I think the custom like or the, like the default um, optimizer for FastAI is the Adam. Uh, but uh, I tried also with SGD and uh, I was trying with different lowering the uh, learning rate, etc. But eventually, sometimes even after 20 epochs, uh, what happens is, yeah, is those uh, terrible nuns that you that you see, and uh, and uh, for no reason, for like no particular reason, your metric sometimes uh, jumps, and uh, so imagine you could obtain like one here, and so your checkpoint would also get overwritten. So this is what happened to me, and uh, uh, I was really sad. I lost uh, some of my computation. So yeah, I decided decided to go the, the advised way and uh, implement team. Has anybody got any questions up until now? Because we are going to move to uh, some other part of the presentation. I have a small question, uh, Pavel. When mm -hmm. you were referring to the uh, cache uh, for reloading uh, very mm -hmm. fast, mm -hmm. uh, is it a file that is uh, related to the pickle files that we have? Or you yeah, have it's, like it's your yours. own metrics? Okay. 
It's it's yours. It's the default. So it's the okay. default uh, Ice Vision caching. Okay, so it's just the pickle file that we save when we parse the the first time, and we want to save yeah. the. Yeah, especially the, the auto fi the auto fixing because there is this uh, tool that checks if your bounding boxes are correct. I mean, if they fit in the original image. So that auto fixing tool takes a little bit uh, of time, maybe twenty minutes on this data set. So yeah, it speeds things up a lot using the, the caching here. Okay, perfect. And okay. it takes 20 minutes, even with the, the last uh, um, tunings that we add, where we don't check, uh, we don't use the image size uh, package? Mm, yeah, I think so. Yeah, actually, the, the auto fixing is the, the, the most time consuming part. Okay, good. So it's, Thank it's you. not the, yeah, yeah, I, I actually even changed that. I, I, I have a patch for this to use uh, the uh, PyTorch uh, image checking. And mm -hmm. still, it still takes some time. Yeah. Okay. okay. There was Perfect. another question, I think. Yeah, I, I just wanted to chime in that I've, I've, uh, on those two points, I've had exactly that. Uh, um, seen the same thing with the auto fixing. It's great, but it's um, super slow, and I haven't dug in yet to to look at the speed. But this includes, um, I've, I am, patching it to so that it doesn't check for file sizes. So uh, I've, I've definitely seen that. And I also wanted to ask. Um, uh, if you've seen uh, the kind of an instability uh, during training of efficient debt, where um, your you know your your loss kind of pops up and down in, in somewhat unsuspected, unexpected ways, uh, is it the, the training loss or the validation loss? Both. Both. I think yes, uh, it happened with. But not the training, though, with the validation loss. Uh, in the initial epochs, I had like those kind of uh, edges. But later, it stabilized. It could be connected with the optimizer you used. Uh, still, when I'm using the TIM that I'm going to talk about, uh, yeah, sometimes for the initial ep epochs, you can see those uh, yeah, jumping up and down. But it's not like, like it's, it doesn't, uh, it finally converges still. So it's like, uh, yeah, it's jumping, but it will stabilize. Thanks. Yes, I haven't, uh, I haven't seen a stabilization yet, but it, it may just mm -hmm. take a while. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. So, uh, yeah, uh, the team. So the team library also comes from Ross, uh, that guy. Um, and, uh, well, basically, it's a bunch of uh, optimizers and schedulers that are yeah, implemented for PyTorch that we can use. Uh, that are actually recommended for the efficient debt models and probably some others as well. And uh, yeah, I just to fix the none bug, I decided to implement them in my in my workflow, and this is how I did it. So I basically defined this data class uh, class uh, with all those uh, fields which are the hyperparameters passed to the two of those functions: create optimizer and create scheduler. So whenever you want to define uh, the two, uh, yeah, you just Upon upon uh, yeah creating your, your model, you just define a bunch of, of stuff that you want to change, and uh, pass pass those to uh, the yeah, subsequent methods. So, is there fast AI support here? You might ask for this uh, team. So uh, there is a an article here describing on how to do that, but I think this is still from uh, coming from V1. Uh, so as far as I know, uh, it's not yet. I could not find like, anything in the top ten uh, Google Google finds. Uh, I think it's underway, but uh, why, at this point, looking at the like time, uh, uh, yeah, time-wise, how much it would take me to implement that in FastAI, and knowing how robust is the V2 with uh, uh, all its uh, type dispatches and so on, I, th I uh, this is the moment I decided to turn to PyTorch Lightning, because um, it's, it seems much more custom, yeah, customizable, uh, at least in the part for creating optimizers, because uh, as I will show you. Changing the configuring the optimizers for PyTorch Lightning is is as simple as this. It's just a factory method that all uh, Lightning models have. So is the configure optimizers and the only plugin that I had to define for it to work in PyTorch Lightning was to use those create optimizer functions. So imp uh, imported from Tim directly, uh, passing the config file, which is a instance of this uh, data class here. 
and voila and that's how that's how it works that's uh, i just uh yeah form it into a uh, format expected by the pytorch lightning and uh, yeah and it worked uh simple as that well not not exactly because uh, those those objects are uh, an, an instances of uh, tim uh, scheduler and tim optimizer which is something that pytorch lightning does not uh, recognize correctly but i made this pull request and uh, i'm yeah just made a single line change uh, for for the code by the guys uh, at pytorch lightning want me to test it more so it's not yet uh, merged uh, honestly, I don't have much time for, for working on that, seeming, looking at how much tests they run and how many of those failed <laughs> on my uh, single change. Um, but I think this, will, this is something on the way that if not me, then maybe someone else is invited to, to proceed uh, with that pull request. But, but uh, this is a single line change where uh, yeah, I'm accepting also a different class for the, for the optimizers. And that's it. So now we can... Uh, uh, yeah, make a make a try uh, try again to train the model, and hopefully we won't see the nuns this time. Uh, so here I'm importing a bunch of utility stuff that I defined for for this uh, f that model. Uh, it's not not like of import uh, right now, but what the core stuff is uh, is creating this uh, base model. So this is actually inheriting from the base model, which has this configure optimizers uh, thing. Yeah, so we can create this. Uh, yeah, regular stuff. So I so I created this uh, freeze uh, method method to, to resemble exactly what we have in FastAI. So here I freeze my model, and uh, so here is the trainer. So this is something uh, specific for PyTorch Lightning. So instead of having the learner object, we have the trainer. So here we define uh, like how many GPUs we want, epochs, some other stuff that was advised by Ross, and uh, weights summary. That is uh, defined, and now we can uh, run our uh, learning refiner same way that we did in uh, FastAI. And plot the results. So, well, more or less we see the same curve, although the point here uh, is obviously wrong, but uh, the reminder of the curve is, should be the same stuff that we had with uh, FastAI. So, uh, yeah, it seems that, that things are, are uh, in order. So one thing here, this is actually something that uh, Francesco uh, noticed today. When we run the learning rate finder, it changes our optimizer. This is terrible. But uh, it's kind of a bug, I guess, at Whitehorse Lightning. Uh, so, so, yeah, we have to redefine the trainer and the model in order to actually get back to the optimizer that we are defining here. Uh, well, I don't want to get into details, but uh, this workaround of recreating the, the model uh, works the way we ex we would expect it to work. Uh, Pavel, Pavel yeah? just, can I just uh, well, just a, a, a clarification on, on, on my side? I think that screw up happens only when you call trainer.tune. Uh, mm. And not when you call what you're doing. I think it's it's the right thing to do, right? Uh, when you oh, yeah. invoke LF find, that I, according to my experiments, it's okay. But when mm -hmm. you call trainer tune, mm -hmm. uh, that does it automatically, and then it, it overrides uh, the everything you just said is completely true. What mm -hmm. you're doing is, is fine. So in I, theory, I you, should not, you should not need to reinstantiate the the, the trainer in theory. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I checked that today. We, I was like discussing with Francesco, and unfortunately, it, the same thing happens. Uh, I, I tested it. Oh, here. Okay. I tested it here in, the, in this notebook, and that's why I rewrote this. Uh, I was getting like uh, straight All right. All right. after that. Yeah, I, I also expected that the tune would be like something that changes the actual object, but uh, but here the tuner also does the same. In fact, the tune uh, calls the other find, and like the same stuff happens. This is something, yeah, this is an issue. This is a bug, I guess. Uh -huh. And uh, mm -hmm. I think we would have to um, maybe, yeah, maybe later today or, or uh, during the week, uh, like just inf uh, tell the guys that, that this is not what we would expect, I guess. Yeah. Especially when we have the, the configure uh, optimizers uh, defined, that, that, that method. Um, maybe I can chime in on that. If I remember correctly, um, in the documentation, it even says that, or Basically, if you have a self.lr in your modal class 
then this will automatically be overwritten if you sir, uh, fi go for find learning rate. Um, it will also give you a small warning that if you don't have a self.lr parameter, that the learning rate can't be set automatically and that you have to add this parameter to your class. So I'm not sure if this is unintended behavior or not. Well, I would. Uh, I was um, quite surprised that it overwrites my uh, optimizer. Uh, my, not the optimizer, but the scheduler. Uh, well, I want to see the learning rate, but uh, well, uh, it's up to my my decision. Uh, I, I would think that because that's like come, I, it comes from my experience with fast AI. So, like those are two separate things. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I would agree. But uh, or that's what I remember from the documentation when I read through it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it could be. It, it, it might be the case uh, as you describe it. Uh, I, I this is something I just found today, so I'm not uh, exactly like uh, prepared to explain the details of that. But uh, yeah, just keep that in mind that this might be uh, might influence uh, your your uh, training. So uh, yeah, as we see, we we run the training in the background and uh, it works. So the loss seems uh, seems fine. Well, we don't get the nuns, but this is exactly the same stuff that we observed just with the initial epochs of fast AI. So once again, you will have to believe me on this one that it doesn't produce the nuns uh, this time. So this uh, little uh, tweak um, uh, just just works. Uh, so yeah, one thing to notice is the epoch time and the GPU load. Uh, this is something uh, I was surprised with in PyTorch Lightning. So when we were trying to train fast AI, uh, uh, using the fine tune uh, function, the epoch time was about two and a half hours. Uh, how is it possible that uh, PyTorch Lightning is just one and a half? So the, the, uh, I'm not sure about the answer, but I figure this is because uh, it doesn't uh, gather, um, the, doesn't or doesn't gather or doesn't calculate the backward pass when it is frozen for the for all of the model and only calculates the backward pass for the parts which have the requires grad set to true. And uh, the GPU load is certain of that. So here we only have like nearly two uh, gigabytes load, while in FastAI, as you saw, it, it crashed at first because uh, it queued out, like I was out of memory. So I don't know, I'm not sure why this is the, this way. But uh, well, also in this case, if you want to do transfer learning with PyTorch Lightning, it's faster. So that's, uh, that's uh, an interesting, interesting observation that I had. Uh, okay, yeah, so this could train for, okay, yeah, there was a question. So it is, is this is this still frozen? Just, I, I don't recall which, at which step we are. Yeah, it's frozen. Like here is okay. the non trainable you're, you're, Okay, so you're, you're, you're just training the head. Yes, yes. Okay, exactly. okay got it, thank you. Yeah. Okay, let me stop that. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, now the, I think that well, we came. We all came here today. Is the, the multi GPU training? So yeah, to go big. Uh, let's see what we've done so far. So we defined uh, the records. We got the data loaders, uh, overridden the optimizers and schedulers, and uh, we have the model and pre-trained weights. So yeah, pre-trained weights. It's it's loaded uh, underneath. Um, this is, yeah, I would not get into details in here, but once we, we provide the name for the model, uh, the Ice Vision automatically gathers uh, the weights from uh, Ross Weiss, uh, Whiteman's uh, pre trained models. So, yeah, so uh, what we want when we want to go, go big, go to cloud, train on multiple GPUs. So, my usual approach is to uh, like configure some kind of uh, experiment tracking. Uh, so, here I recommend W and B, so we can obtain those nice graphs because uh, unlike fast ai uh pytorch lightning doesn't come like with batteries included in terms of uh logging so we won't have this kind of uh, uh tabular um a log that we are uh, used to on the, when using fast ai so we have to log it somewhere else and uh, yeah so i i uh, decided to use w and b what it is yeah it's just an experiment uh, tracking tool uh, that uh, runs uh, as a browser and as a browser tool where we have access to all of our projects and we can browse the experiments that we run 
and see all the graphs that we gather for those in one single place. And also we can easily share it with others. So uh, yeah, that's also something that I like about uh, WNB. So once again, uh, to, to use WNB, let's uh, extend our uh, config file a bit. So by providing the project name for the WNB and the run name, all the other stuff uh, is unchanged. So yeah, we define the WNB logger, uh, regular stuff. I also define here the learning rate monitor because I want to see if my learning rate uh, changes uh, as expected throughout the training. This is something that is not logged automatically. So, but but uh, through using this uh, this callback, we can later watch uh, what watch the, the learning rate change on uh, on graphs in WNB. And also, yeah, I recommend setting up some checkpointing uh, to monitor the metric that we are most interested in. And in this case, that's the Coco metric here uh, with the maximum, of course, that we want to save. And let's try the new uh, trainer setup. Uh -huh. And one, one more thing that I uh, introduced here. So yeah, that was the same stuff we had before. Here's the logger passed to the trainer, callbacks, yeah, that I described before. And those two lines is how we use mixed precision in PyTorch Lightning. So yeah, it's also something that you can find uh, in the documentation. I introduce it here to speed up the training even more. I think right now uh, the mixed precision for fast AI doesn't work yet for efficient debt models. So for those of you who want to use efficient debt and uh, speed up the training, PyTorch Lightning would be the way to go, I guess. Yeah. Or, or yeah, try to fix the, the bug for with um, mixed precision training in fast AI. So once again, we define the model and uh, fit it. So now we have a couple of uh, informations about the run that is being locked to W and B uh, model. Uh huh. So it's entirely frozen. No, sorry. Uh, trainable parameters six million. So this time I didn't freeze the model and see the time uh, has uh, yeah, significantly increased. Uh, even more than uh, fast AI initial epochs, but remember it was frozen, so we would have to compare the unfrozen uh, run to have the exact one-to-one -one comparison. So uh, yeah, as it says, uh, it's reporting uh, to uh, that page in WNB. We can actually follow the link and see that uh, yeah, something is already being locked here. The the training loss uh, seems to be decreasing, at least in the initial steps, so things seem fine. And the confusion metrics, so this is something that I'm working on uh, to release uh, for the ice vision uh, as, as, a, as a metric uh, entirely. So this is like a result of a test run for, for like a totally uh, yeah, model starting from scratch, so it doesn't know anything about the classes yet, but we will see it progressing uh, with time. Okay, let's, let's close this window for now. I think we can stop uh, the training also, the multi-GPU training. Can I ask a question here, Yeah, Powell? sure. Um, so for the 1DB integration, uh, do you have like to uh, manually uh, log what you want? So, I mean, at least tell uh, what you want to log. Um, something like, you know, log, uh, valid mm -hmm. loss, log, train loss. Do you have to add all of that or does it automatically figure out that it needs to log pretty much everything? <laughs> Uh, yeah, did you use Comet or something else, maybe? Or was that? Comet, because I was using Comet no, before. I did. Uh -huh. no, okay. I did. For, for experiment tracking. Uh -huh. no, so, uh, uh, how, most of the things are done automatically, and it's uh, done by okay. the guys at, at uh, Ice Vision. Uh, um, I did some extension to log metrics separately for different data loaders, because I'm uh, using uh, multiple data validation and test data loaders. So they come from like a different data sets. Um, so, so I made some extensions to the logging here. Okay. Uh, so I'm actually logging manually, but, uh, but in general, well, from what we have now, if you use a single data loader, you can just use everything that uh, comes uh, like included from the ice vision and uh, it will be locked uh, the same way I have here. So things like the training loss, uh, validation loss, um, the cocoa metric, all, yeah, all those will be locked uh, automatically for you. Okay, so just importing that, just sending that callback, the 1DB callback into the trainer, that mm -hmm. would be enough. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome.
so yeah, here's the you know, it crashed, the turn crashed to produce the final matrix. So yeah, let's go now with the multi GPU training. So how do we do that? The the hard part in Python's Lightning, uh, it takes a lot of work, and uh, it requires us to change two lines of code. So changing uh, from one was one here. So we change that one to two, and uh, we have to provide also the accelerator that we want to use, and press enter. <laughs> but well, well, uh, that's true, right? I'm trying to train on two GPUs, but uh, my machine only has zero. So how do I want to do that? Well, <laughs> not possible. But also, yeah, this this guy is put here to remind me about uh, that I might have uh, disappoint uh, disappointed you because uh, there is no much magic happening. This is really simple. Just changing two things in your code, and you have a multi GPU trainer for uh, Python Lightning. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. nice. <laughs> You are forgiven. <laughs> yeah. uh, but okay, this is not the end, though. Uh, I will show you how to uh, still how to use the multi GPU training. But uh, for now, we have to move to a uh, cloud uh, virtual machine. And uh, to do this, we will export all this script that we have here, and we will export it to a Python file because uh, we don't want to run our uh, training in a notebook. I don't recommend that. I think it's possible, but on the long runs, like, I mean, uh, a week, it just crashes after some time. I don't know, too much output logged into the, the HTML or whatever, uh, like, is happening on the, on the backend there. I don't recommend it. Also, like, it's, it's, it's harder to, to view if you are using just the console. And uh, so I, I just stick with using a script uh, training for, for multi-GPUs and, like, for a longer runs. So this is something that comes out of this... Uh, Jupyter NB convert. What I'm doing, I'm converting this notebook that we are watching right now into the uh, Python script with a couple of tweaks here. I'm removing the markdowns and I'm only keeping the cells that I chose uh, by hand. So it's a little bit of, of uh, cheating. But uh, well, what we end up with is like this uh, nice script. Uh, of course, it's not everything in order, like the imports are in the wrong places, but uh, from this you can create uh, a script that you desire. And uh, as we see, there is this trainer in the end and the fit method. So now uh, let's, uh, yeah, what else we have to do is, of course, to export our envir environment. Uh, I won't get into details on that, but uh, usually we can just run the conda and export and uh, create the environments file. But this, this is not guaranteed to work, especially when we uh, work cross platform so if we develop on windows and then want to deploy that on a uh, like linux machine it's not guaranteed to like install the same uh, requirements uh, for our environment but in my case i prepared the the environment files so that's the conda yaml and uh, the requirements txt for a pip and also we have to that's not enough unfortunately so i realize that this is a lot of like uh, unnecessary stuff and this could be done in a docker but uh, i'm not yet familiar with docker i'm learning it but so this is as close to docker our portability i i could get i know it's not not yet there but uh well this is something i i managed to get working so on top of the conda and the pip requirements uh, file i want to install some of my specific uh, git uh, forks like in, in like in, in particular the team support that i uh, created for for the PyTorch Lightning and the uh, Confusion Matrix, um, yeah, fork. So this is uh, like work in progress. This cannot be done, unfortunately, in the requirements file uh, for like very complicated reasons. I spend a lot of time researching that, uh, but there is doesn't seem to be a way of specifying some flags like this one upgrade here to a uh, requirements txt file. And so we just have to install it from hand. So that's why we have this uh, additional script. So this script uh, creates the environment, installs uh, some a bunch of other stuff and uh, makes sure that we have the one-to-one -one environment. So let's check if uh, we have done everything. We have created the script, conda, and this is done. So yeah, putting data set on the cloud. I've done that, of course, before, like just to speed things up. And here I have it in my uh, personal cloud. Uh, Config script, uh, another thing that we need for the data crunch. So to tell the, the default machine what it should install, 
apart from the Conda environment, like CUDA and other bunch of other stuff uh, that we want. Actually, the Conda itself, because the depending on the cloud, it can come with a different state of uh, preparation for for the machine learning training. So we may have to install a lot of additional stuff. And uh, so that's why we need that uh, config script depend that uh, is, depends on the machine uh, that we use. And yeah, push everything to Git so to make it uh, like as portable as possible. So now let's uh, let's try to create a GPU instance on Datacrunch. So this is a platform uh, that was advertised on FastAI. I kind of liked it. I've been using it uh, a couple of months now. And uh, it's just uh, quite simple to deploy. It doesn't have like all the extra stuff that you might have in the uh, GCP or AWS, but it still uh, does the trick and uh, like it's the minimum minimum things that we want. So uh, yeah, after creating an account here and charging it, uh, yeah, actually I, I messaged the guys, so a big, big, uh, big uh, thanks to them because uh, I said that I was going to have this presentation and whether they would donate some some. Uh, some discount code for you guys, so so that you could maybe use. And actually, they they gave me the code and uh, even gave me a test uh, credits here. Uh, so yeah, so I could have this presentation. Uh, really nice. So let's Thank try. You. I, I, I I have not done much, so that's that's uh, actually for the presentation. Uh, I think it's useful. Yeah, like b before they had this fast AI code, but I think it's gonna be uh, like uh, yeah uh, yeah this cancelled soon. So. You can use you can use that and uh, yeah it's all in the you can copy it from here later i will also post it on the discord channel uh well i it's not guaranteed to work like because they have limited resources so let's see if we can actually deploy the instance so uh, and it works like this we just choose how many uh v100s we want let's say we want four choose an image uh yeah i want qda 10.2 uh, ssh keys so this is something we have to configure. If you are just like creating a fresh install, here you have to add your keys and you can create those uh, through uh, like uh, SSH. You can like follow this link to see how to do this. And uh, then just copy your public key and uh, paste it here in, the, in that box that we have. Because that, that's necessary if you want to connect to your machine using um, using SSH. Otherwise, like there are other options like FastAI here, so we can use it as a notebook uh, instance as well. So that's much simpler. If you want to just, just like test how this works, you can uh, choose this uh, FastAI image and uh, you will have a, a, like a button to open up a notebook. And this will be, yeah, like a good, good start, I guess. But yeah, in this case, I want to have uh, CUDA. I have my pre-configured keys and I will also load uh, my uh, my script, so the the thing I mentioned before. So yeah, like here, this is a very blank uh, instance. So we have to do a lot of stuff, like installing some basic libraries. We also have to define a user. So this is being done here. Uh, let's see if I. Oh yeah, I, I have it like a more described described uh, config here. So yeah, downloading and installing a bunch of stuff, creating the user, and uh, to create a user, yeah, we need to like create it first without a password because if we do that, the the shell expect us to type in the password for it. So we have to create it without the password and then like hack it to actually, here is like my password in a file, if you want to know. <laughs> yeah, so uh, my password for that uh, user on that instance is just passed as in a single uh, text txt file. This is, a, this is not something that is recommended. I, I can imagine a lot of people would be getting panic attacks seeing a, a password just uh, typed like this, but well, it, it gets things done, and uh, this is the only <laughs> workaround that I found so far to have it. Yeah. So you have some comments, like for for. Uh... No. Well, I know, I know. Yeah, I was just laughing at that. <laughs> <laughs> I managed to fool the shell that I'm actually typing in. That's. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So we create a user, copy the SSH keys because. Uh, they are only only copied for like by default for the root user setting the password and installing Anaconda. So yeah, this is something that we will use uh, for most of your machine learning projects. And let's see if we get the resource because yeah, as I said, they're they're usually busy. I have one uh, booked though, so don't worry in case it doesn't work. Oh, how many do we have here? Four. Just type the name. 
and uh, fingers crossed. It's okay, it's taking some time, so there is hope that they have resources available. So it's good to wait. <laughs> their pricing? Do they, Any questions? Yeah, how is their pricing on storage? So if you've got a, a big data set? Uh, they don't have storage, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's like very, very limited and uh, simple. But for for my testing, I yeah I liked it for its uh, yeah for its simple uh, simplicity. So okay yeah well this is how we define the instance and all that scripts uh, that I showed you before. I have one running here. I think I will just move on to 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 it to uh, actually show you uh, what we can do with the multi GPU training. Uh, so let's create a new window. Okay, I think I have my Tmux session already here. Yeah. So I am connected now to the instance and uh, there is a couple of, of things that uh, I've done. So I, I, what I did, I uh, downloaded the data sets, uh, just as described here, yeah, I deployed it. Uh, I, I have connected uh, to the instance, uh, uh, created my, yeah, actually sourced the, the Conda environment, created uh, the environment itself, cloned my repos repository, uh, from, so this is the, uh, yeah, all the, the the entire repository that I'm uh, talking about right now, and and uh, yeah, I did some other configurations that we had uh, to do in order to reproduce the the same uh, environment that we have here. So let's now try to stop this and uh, show you. So let's clear this. Go to the home folder. Ah, okay. Oh, yeah, that's it. So, so this is the deep fashion. So that's my uh, my repository. You can go into it. See here we have the, all the same stuff that we had there before. So the data sets, uh, my helper, eyes vision detector, uh, for, yeah, methods and functions, and a couple of scripts to create uh, it all together. So uh, I also recommend you to use this uh, GPU stat tool. So what it does, it uh, allows you to see your regular NVIDIA SMI output. So this is what we get. I guess you're familiar with this. But with GPU stat, uh, it calls that uh, NVIDIA SMI uh, on a regular basis with a time interval specified after I, so one second in this case. And uh, yeah, it will just like give us the, uh, the information about the load on our uh, GPUs. So this is something like for to, to check if, if things work as, as we expect them to. Uh, so here we have uh, a bunch of uh, uh, Python scripts. So uh, interesting stuff here is the train pi, which is the, the, the training script for multiple GPUs uh, using uh, PyTorch Lightning. So I will just view it here because I think it's more pleasant for DI than using Vim. Can you create the font size once here? Mm -hmm. Can I use it with scroll? Oh, not, not so easy though. Control plus maybe? No, it doesn't ah. work. Okay, okay. No problem then, no problem. Don't worry. Okay, well, but the interesting stuff is like, I'm not lying to you. It's the same things that we had in the notebook. Uh, like with the trainer and the model and the fit, call to the fit. And so, yeah, let's, let's maybe try it. Go in here, uh, fin train. Yeah, we see that's the same script. The only thing that we have to change here is the, the number of GPUs that we want to use. So as I said, uh, let's see if it really is that simple. So let's uh, say we want two GPUs because we have two on this particular node and uh, the accelerator. Let's set it to DDP, and uh, this is something I tested 
uh, to work. Like by default, it's it's some some other accelerator that uh, PyTorch uh, Lightning suggests. Uh, in my case, DDP uh, just works uh, works like a charm. So actually, I think we can also increase the batch size in here. Uh, let's say to um, sixteen. Write that and uh, try to run the script. Uh -huh. Activate our environment first. Let's see. So for the yeah, data yeah. set, you downloaded it to, the, to this machine, is that it? Yeah, I did it like uh, before because I was uh, actually afraid that it would take too much time to download all that. And uh -huh. uh, yeah, like for all unexpected stuff that might appear on the way. <laughs> um, sure. So you yeah, just downloaded to a folder here on this uh -huh. machine. Yeah, and I just, yeah, I downloaded the data set and cloned the git repo. Uh, yeah, recreated the environment with the configuration files that I, I showed you. And actually, as you can see now, I haven't not run it yet because the WNB is asking for my credentials. So let's say I want to log it actually and uh, use an existing WNB account. And I have to then copy my uh, API key. Oh, maybe they interested to do that on stream. Uh, but it doesn't show like entirely. It just shows ah, like okay. a bit. A bit. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, like I will, I will delete uh, those keys and like recreate them. No worries. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's paste it here. Yeah, it. I think it. Yeah. So the run is presentation. It does. It did its magic. It's magic. And let's see. Yeah, we see like the both of the cards are lo loaded not in 100%, like we could still probably increase the batch size because uh, the memory is still available. Uh, yeah, but we have reduced the epoch time from uh, three, three and a half. I yeah, think correct. Yeah, I think so. To 1.4. I guess it could be even more if we increase the batch size and play it around a bit. But what's most important, as you see, there is like huge jumps in the load on our GPUs. And the problem and the reason for that is that the model is actually quite small. It's like D1. And uh, so the real advantage is, uh, is in using uh, like, uh, external, like uh, larger models. If you go for uh, D5, for example, and use their uh, suggested uh, 1024 per 24 uh, image size, then it will like use uh, around, use up the entire V100 memory. So yeah, that's it for PyTorch Lighting. But uh, I guess, as I said in the beginning, most of you would like to see how to do multi-GPU training for fast AI. And unfortunately, things for FastAI are a little bit more complex. So it's not just changing two lines in your code, uh, but it's changing maybe 10, 10 lines of code. Uh, so uh, how I did it. So but there's a couple of steps we need to do actually to get uh, FastAI running uh, in the multiple GPU. So first of all, we need to upgrade the FastAI that we have because the FastAI version that we have, because the one which is right now coupled with the uh, main release of Ice Vision it uses the ones that I couldn't get it to running on. So I recommend installing those. And then we need to convert our uh, script a bit. So it's not anymore in a, in a single single file like this that we have uh, some, uh, some, some variables defined in a script and then used, uh, changed and reused and redefined, etc. So what is suggested by the FastAI people is to prepare the, the script in such a way that we define a main method. So I have done it uh, beforehand. So basically I just move all this stuff uh, into this function. And we also need to uh, wrap a couple of bunch of stuff that we don't want to uh, have executed on both nodes into this kind of like a, a, a wrapper. So we get the rank of our node and only if it's zero, so let's say it's the master node, only then we want to execute something. So in my case, it's the WNB in it. So we don't want to uh, instantiate it twice and have like the separate uh, projects uh, running in the background and logging into two separately. So there is a bit of hacking uh, into it. It's not as straightforward as in PyTorch Lightning. So that's this. And also we need to uh, introduce this uh, uh, clause, yeah? So, so, so uh, uh, to, to use the, the with statement. 
so with district ctx and then like just our regular regular uh, training part uh, comes so once we've done we've done that and we have uh, the uh, our our main function we can uh, call it in a distributed mode with the uh, fast ai launch so here uh -huh, let's let's see what we have i guess it's uh when I killed it, it didn't like it that much. So now it's uh, still occupying some of the memory for the GPUs. But uh, don't worry, I will uh, I will kill it. Okay, let's. I have actually expected that this could happen and prepared this little killer. Kill it. <laughs> So that's actually, that's the, we are getting to the end of the presentation. I just want to watch, you, uh, tell, show you uh, how to run the the, the fast AI multi GPU training, and that it actually works. So yeah, as I said, we we do the modular call for the fast AI launch, and uh, we pass as an argument the the GPUs. In this case, it's number zero and one, as highlighted here, and the training script, which I showed you just now, and this. Let's see. So the output is a little bit different for uh, FastAI than for uh, the Python Lightning. We can see that it does a couple of things like redundantly, like it does it for the first node and then for the second node. And we'll see that in a couple of places. But uh, important, and also the logger or the progress bar doesn't work. Uh, but the important thing is that it, it works, like that uh, we can see that the training is proceeding, the GPUs are loaded and uh, yeah, I think we managed to to do what I promised that we will we would. So we we started the multi GPU training on FastAI and uh, Python Lightning, and all this can be done uh, using uh, the Ice Vision uh, library. And I hope that you that you enjoyed uh, what I have just shown you and learned something, and uh, you will use it in your work. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that's that's that. I would wrap it up. Uh, if you have any questions, I will be happy to answer. Yeah, uh, thank you a lot, by the way, again. I just, a little bit sad that we cannot see here the estimated time, right? So we could compare with Lightning to see. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's okay. Well. Yeah, this, I'm still, there was a bit, uh, some, some hacking yeah, involved in, in getting it to run, but everything here is described here. So I had to uh, use those two patches uh, to get the multi-GPU training. So apart from updating the, 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 the fast AI version and uh, converting the script. I also have like those two patches. Mm -hmm. uh, this is this is like the key patch. So the uh, we also need to tell the distributed data loader that it should use this function to create the batch and not some some fast AI uh, defaults. And uh, yeah, and then this is what I did. There was no nothing else uh, like uh, underneath. Nice. Amazing job, uh, Pavel, what you did there. Thank you. Uh, it's thanks to you because I used a lot of your work. <laughs> we are going to use your work now. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how it works, right? <laughs> the exchange. The idea of having a community is that we have a contributor from different backgrounds and different interests, and then we try to work all together. So I was just wondering uh, if it would be possible to uh, incorporate the, like, the changes that you add for FastAI and that we automate them so we don't have to go through all the different steps. So this is an open qu question. You don't have to answer, but mm -hmm. just to like uh, explore the possibility that we can uh, add, for example, what you are showing, the, the different patterns, that we can uh, uh, integrate them in uh, in the co code base of... So the, the patches, for sure, the patches, for sure, can be in, in, incorporated. Uh, I'm just not sure where to put them, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, like, we have to find another strategy, actually. We cannot use patches inside the library because it's going to patch for everything, not for only efficient debt. So create batch mm -hmm. is going to become that efficient that uh, build train batch not only for efficient but for everything else. So like I'm, we have we, we are going to dig more a little bit on why this is happening because this is, should be like the job of the callbacks that we have there, 
sorry that not to happen, but there's something that happens on distributed fast AI that somehow the callback is being like it's not being enough for some reason. So you have to find that out. Yeah, the idea is not to use the patches, but uh, yes, the code. no patches. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. Uh, I don't like that the patching, <laughs> but sometimes for a quick fix, it's really yeah. It's very good for a quick fix, but not you have on the library now. No, no, no. Yeah, it should be like like a, a natural API where you don't have to try to figure out which one is. The, uh, I'm not sure for, for how we we should wrap this because uh, this is something that sits deep in FastAI, and uh, maybe we would have actually to like to to go to the fast AI GitHub and ask them to change this? No, what, what we have to do is we have to make it work with what he expects. So uh, I see like you commented out there, learn at YB, and it's because YB maybe we are passing right now an empty tuple or something like that. So we just have to make sure to pass something it can understand. And the way we do mm. that is, is in the callbacks. So in the callbacks, we have to go in there and like kind of handle the data and give to FastAI what he wants, basically. So I think it's this, is the, this is the, the records that we have. So like the class map uh, and all, all that stuff that goes into it. It just, uh, FastAI just takes the first argument and tries to infer the batch size from there. So, uh, but if, if I change like uh, the, the, the Y to X, like it works because this is a, an actual tensor. And here the why in our case is like a dictionary, I think. Yeah, what I don't understand is why it, this problem only happens when distributed is involved. Because this, this is ah, not... No, no, this is not, this is not uh, just a distributed uh, problem. Oh, wait. You cannot train like efficient at even with uh, uh, non-distributed with one GPU? In fast AI without this patch, uh, no. Oh, I'm not having that problem. So we should investigate that. Uh, for me, I can <laughs> I'm able to train like efficient that normally, without any patches. Yeah, with all our examples there. Yeah. So quite, ah, maybe it is because of the new version you're using. Maybe something changed there. Can it be I'm that? I'm using the 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 newest. Yeah. Yeah, maybe it's that then, because I'm using 2.1.4. Ah, uh, we pinned. Yes. So maybe there's a difference there. Uh, yeah. Is it? Apple is using a more recent one, and this is why. Because yeah, I'm, I'm also having that problem, and I was very delighted to see the patch um, already in place when I looked uh, earlier today. Um, and I am using 2.1.4 fast AI. Wow, interesting. And I, I'm I'm not sure what's different. You know, I I. Um, I don't know what's different um, in the setup, but I've, I've definitely uh, also experienced exactly the same problem. I, could, I couldn't run efficient debt at all. Okay, okay, let's try to figure that out. Yeah, yeah, on the forums. I see. Yeah, here, here's the, the bug, even. Yeah, I described it. Yeah, for some yeah. reason, I always had that in mind that this was only happening with distributed. I had that in mind incorrectly. There's a couple of people, yeah, like reporting that. So I guess, ha, yeah. got it. We're going to take a look at I that. Think then. This is that was the reason why we pinned the fast AI. No, no, no. Uh, Adam is saying that he's using the pinned version and still having the problem. So it's not related oh. to that, it seems. Yeah, when I was I was using the I was uh, yeah like you can have you can try this here the, the call up and it shows this. I will. Yeah. All right. Very nice. Cool. The the other thing is, what so to make it work with the PyTorch Lightning, you had to fork. The, the repo and then add your uh, your change that uh, you are requesting for a PR there uh, is it correct uh, yeah so the change is for for team support so you can also try try it without this but uh, yeah it's possible that you will uh, get uh, nuns uh, after some time okay. for no reason so this is for like efficient that uh, specific yeah. It's specific for the optimizers in, in team, right? I think that's what I understood. You want to use the, uh, the team yeah, optimizers. Yeah, I want to use. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, right now, uh, Python writing doesn't want them. Gotcha. Yeah. I see. So, so it, actually, it's great that you are using uh, team optimizers because uh, we are working on uh, adding support for team library. We already having we already have a branch where we show that uh, 
Ice, Ice Vision can support the Tim uh, repo and it support all the the uh, classification models that uh, Tim uh, offers there. So it it's like it goes in the same direction that we we are heading now. And from what I understand now is if we want to uh, to to have the team support in uh, Fest AI, we need to figure out how to override the uh, like the default optimizer that is used in Fest AI and the scheduler. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we we have to figure out yeah, how to plug it in because I I haven't spent much time uh, on, on yeah. Fast AI recently since I just uh, yeah just PyTorch Lightning. Yeah, just to express what what we have to search now and to explore to mm -hmm. yeah it would it would be yeah how to use the okay. you know. perfect. Good. All right. Any more questions, anyone? I don't think so. Uh, so, Pavel, amazing presentation. We are going to talk more on the forums for sure about all of this. Huh. Really cool stuff. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks a lot. I'm glad. Thank you. Thank you for, for coming. It was uh, really nice to share uh, some of my results and yeah, I'm really happy yeah, about thanks, that. Thanks a lot for the library, actually, because uh, yeah, I, I managed to to test some, some stuff that I always wanted to do. Yeah, really happy, really happy that you liked it. Very nice to hear. Uh, I'm sorry, can I, can I have the, one more question? Yes, yes, yes. Sure. Yeah, I just wanted to ask if NVIDIA is your universal password. <laughs> <laughs> I was authorized to answer that question. Uh, we're going to check as soon as we <laughs> stop the recording. <laughs> yes, we're going to check. Yeah, so. <laughs> Please don't check. <laughs> Especially uh, your, your bank account. Because <laughs> we don't, we're not interested in GitHub. Or just the bank account. <laughs> Yeah, well, no, it's not. No, it's not. But don't check it. <laughs> <laughs> but please don't check. Yeah. You have to trust me just as you trust me that multi GPU train. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Great. Thank All you right. very much Pavel, for the Thank you. Uh, presentation. All right. Bye bye, everyone. See you later. Bye bye. Ciao. See. Thanks, guys. Bye.